prevalent in many societies around the world, right? It's not prejudice. It doesn't sure. attack, you know, part particular sure. you know, race group or sure. ethnic group. Sure. How would you define Down syndrome, uh, you know, in fairly common terms? So in common terms, we have to speak about a chromosomal abnormality. That is what Down syndrome is. And I think I would speak a little bit about what that means, about right. our chromosomes. Now, our genetic blueprint that actually determines who we are, how we think, how we act, and everything like that, resides, I'm sure everybody knows that way, it resides, it resides in our DNA. But the DNA is not randomly strewn around in the cell. It's very neatly packaged into tiny structures called chromosomes. Mm. And here's the thing. All normal human beings have 23 pairs of these chromosomes. So if we add all the chromosomes together, they add to 46. Right. All right? Now, there are 22 pairs that deal with function, and the last pair deals with the sex. So if you are XX, that's a female, and if you are XY, that's a male. But whether you're male or female, if you add all the chromosomes together, you will end up with a normal chromosome complement of 46. Now, if you have an abnormal chromosome number, right, which is you either have one extra chromosome or one less chromosome, mm. that is referred to as an aneuploidy, or an abnormal chromosome number, or a chromosome abnormality, and depends where that extra chromosome resides, it's going to give you a specific genetic syndrome. Now, in Down syndrome, that extra chromosome sits on a particular chromosome number, and that chromosome number is 21. So normally you will have a pair on chromosome 21, mm. but in Down syndrome, you don't have a pair, you have three strands, all right? And that is often referred to as trisomy 21. So it's one extra. It's one extra. So another name for trisomy 21 is Down syndrome. Now, this extra chromosome on chromosome 21 will give you a specific phenotype. Now, phenotype means it's an outward expression or what the infant will look like, an, an abnormal genotype. Mm -hmm. Now, the abnormal phenotype would be what you, what you will see. Like, if you look at, at these babies, they have low set ears, they have a flat profile, they have white colorable fissures, and it's easily identifiable across all racial groups, and it doesn't matter where you come from. If right. you see a Down's child, you can know that it is, it is a Down's. But unfortunately, it also has a very important abnormal genotype that all of these babies are neurologically impaired. All of them. So when you say neurologically impaired... They, they are mentally retarded. Okay. And um, what causes this, this extra <laughs> strand? I mean, do we, do we know? Yes, we do. We do know. There are two kind of processes that actually do that. The first process is called non-disjunction. Now, I don't want to get you into too much into the mm. complexity of non-disjunction, but what I'm going to say that the only cells that don't have 46 chromosomes are the sex cells. That is the egg in the female and the sperm in the male. Right. The reason for that is they have half the chromosome complement. And the obvious reason is that when they fertilize, they, they must come connect. back to 46. Right. So you must remember that every month in the female, there will be a reduction division of the egg from 46 down to half that complement. And in the sperm, every three months from 46 to half that complement. Okay. Now, if anything goes wrong with the splitting, anything goes wrong with splitting, that means instead of having 23 chromosomes in one of the daughter cells, you have 24 chromosomes, and the same thing can happen in the sperm. And if that abnormal egg fertilizes with the abnormal sperm, you're going to end up with an abnormal chromosome complement. So this is not hereditary. The non-disjunction process is not hereditary. So if you have a Down's infant, it doesn't mean that you will have a higher risk in the next pregnancy. However, in 5%, the process is called translocation. What does that mean? Translocation is unfortunately hereditary. Let me explain to you. In a translocation process, either the mother or the father carry extra genetic material. Right. But they are balanced because that extra genetic material is offset by less genetic material somewhere else. But when they do the split, you get an unbalanced translocation in the one egg or in the sperm. So when that extra genetic material in the egg will fertilize with the sperm, you're going to get an you're going to get an abnormal chromosome complement. So unfortunately, that is hereditary because that would mean that in 50% of cases, you're going to have a problem because of the extra genetic material. Remember, you've got the extra genetic material on the one strand. Mm -hmm. That one strand would split into the egg, and the normal strand will go into the other egg. So if the abnormal chromosome complement in that egg would fertilize with the sperm, then you can have the problem. So how that's called translocation. That's very rare, actually. Right. That's so, in 5% only. Okay. 